Hi, my name is Bob Carroll. I'm the Executive Vice President at Permanent Solutions Labor Consultants, and I'm your host for today's episode of Employee Relations Words of Wisdom. And I'm so happy to be joined today by uh, Elena Alexandra. Elena, how are you doing? Doing awesome. Uh, it's a great day, and I'm really happy to join you in your outdoor office. Um, <laughs> always a beautiful background uh, to have this conversation. So that's, um, that's great. Do me a favor. Just t tell us about your company yourself and what you do yeah my company is just elena alexandra llc so i just work for myself um i am a transformational coach working with leaders and executives as well as teams in organizations to build a culture where they can have conversations that matter and where everyone can have uh, a voice and where um, that voice can create the context for good communication and enjoyment in work and that segues right into what we're talking about today. So go ahead. Uh, you had a great idea for a topic, so I'll let you have the, uh, the home run here. Yeah, what I really wanted to talk about today was um, the, briefly around um, making good requests. And then um, when we feel like someone's broken a promise, what happens and how we get resentful and we often don't have the right conversation. So the first place where we need to start is really making good requests. Um, so to make those good requests of employees or other leaders or even our spouse or our kid um, is to make sure that you start off with a committed speaker yourself. Um, so you don't ask for something when you're walking out of the room or you don't say, hey, Someone take notes. That's not a very good request, right? Because someone isn't directing it at anyone. So the next piece of that is to have a committed listener um, and making sure that, you know, like right now, we're both having a conversation. We're both committed and present to this conversation. And I could have a, I could make a request of you and that would be a, the grounds to start a really good request, right? The next piece of that is to, to really create those conditions of satisfaction um, for that future action that you're requesting. So making sure you're really clear about what it is that you need, um, not being vague, um, going down to the details that are needed. Um, in some contexts, you need to be really specific. You know, I need you to wear this particular outfit for this presentation, and you get that specific. Um, then getting into that time frame piece. Um, I think we, we've discussed this in the past of how often do you ask your kid to, hey, kid, clean your room, uh, but you don't tell them that you want it done by the end of the day. And so they're like, well, I'll do it by the end of the week. Um, and now at the end of the day, you're pissed because your kid didn't clean their room. Well, that's not fair. You can't be. You didn't put a time frame on your request. Um, and the last piece that most people don't think about and don't consider and we haven't actually talked about in the past is the mood, the mood that the people are in. So the committed listener and the committed speaker, what mood you're in really matters. Um, a great conversation in the wrong mood is the wrong conversation. So when you're making a request, paying attention to what the mood the other person is in is going to have a really big effect. So the piece that, that I really wanted to get into is, you know, what happens when those requests are broken, right? First, you need to make sure that you've actually made a request. That's a good request. And it's not just an expectation. So you didn't just say, hey, the garbage is full. That's not a request to do anything. You might think that that's a request to take out the garbage because it seems sort of obvious to you. Uh, but you didn't ask for the garbage to be taken out. So that's an expectation. And it's really, really easy in, in our personal lives to build up a lot of resentment. And, and a lot of um, coaching that I do with couples, um, there's a lot of resentment that's been built up there. In organizations, there's a lot of resentment that gets built up very quickly between subordinates and their leaders. Um, because their leader didn't ask those specific requests. And so then they're making all these expectations 
and the subordinate didn't know those expectations. And so they're failing without even know that, knowing that they're failing. So assuming that you actually made a request and you had a promise, now we can talk about making a responsible complaint. So when you've made a request that's been promised to be kept and it's not, now you can sit down with someone, again, in this committed relationship where we're both being present. And we can have a conversation of reviewing that context of that request. You know, did this and this happen? Did we have that conversation? Did you commit to that? Assuming that you agree on the facts, now you can have a conversation about what happened. That conversation is an incredibly powerful conversation because you as the leader can talk about what's important. You can start creating a boundary, right? You can start diving down into your deep cares as an organization of what's, how are we going to operate? How are we going to show up? And now you can make a new request and promise. Um, and move forward. Now, if that's a pattern of behavior, that's a different conversation, right? So, so I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So if I was a listener and, and someone said uh, a statement like you said before, like, hey, the garbage is full. A lot of the listeners, you know, that may be in a supervisory position would assume that's a good statement, which you have clarified very clearly it is not. Uh, because they did not set the expectation. One of the things that I talk about often is if you have a supervisor that speaks that way, and we all know they're out there, is actually taking time of in setting expectations, talking to the employees, letting them know, you know the kind of person you are as a leader, uh, and then also letting them set their expectations as employees uh, to you as a supervisor. That way, right. if you say the garbage is full, you know, some employees might need that clarification, like, well, if the garbage is full, please take it out before the end of your shift. Mm -hmm. Other employees would know, like most of us would, if the garbage is full, I better take it out. But you understand what I'm right. saying? Absolutely. And I think, you know, I think that context is very important. So understanding our shared context. So if we've created a context where, we get to say things like the garbage is full and we have gotten to the place where an action is expected after that and it's known, then that's okay. So if you're making requests that are vague and they're working and you're getting the results you want, keep on making your vague requests, please. Now, the, the place that this comes in where making better requests are going to get you better results is when you're not getting the results you want. You know, when you're making sloppy requests and you're not getting the work out of your employees that you're expecting. The other piece of that is, is a lot of employees will answer, yeah, I'll get to that. And that's an unacceptable answer. So part of it too, as a leader, is making sure you're actually getting a committed response. So a yes, a no, a commitment to look into the issue, so a commitment to commit, or a counter offer. You know, my kid, when I said take the garbage out by five o'clock, can come back to me and say, you know, can I do it by seven? Right? And I can say, yeah, that's great, or no, you know what, I have to have it done by five o'clock. So that starts to create the context of working together. The other piece is in a lot of employee relationships. You do not have a culture where you get to say no, right? So that's when you get uncommitted commitments. So creating a work culture where it's safe to say no. And I've had a powerful speaker tell me this before too. It, it is not only okay to say no, but if someone makes a request of me and I don't have the time in my calendar, I'm going to give them a time when I can actually get it done. They may make the request on Friday, but if I say, Elena, I'm swamped. Can I get it to you by Friday? Nine times out of 10, that's going to be acceptable. And now you have a commitment, you have a deadline and everybody's on the same page. 
Right. And the other piece of this, and we talked, we've talked about this in the past is, you know, if you say, Hey, I'm going to roll out the new healthcare plan by February 15th. Well, due to unforeseen circumstances, you can't roll out that new health care plan until May 15th. Now you need to do what's called commitment management. So now you need to have those conversations where you're changing the expectations. So a lot of this is around setting realistic expectations with your employees and you need to do it as a leader and you need to also then expect it from your employees. And you're creating that reciprocity between both entities where you're having clear and concise communication. And, and that's very important. We have talked about that in a project that I worked on. And, yeah. you know, a year and a half down the road when it's not rolled out as promised, uh, you get resistance. You get the uh, feeling that your people that work under you look at you as a liar. And it's all real emotions because we've driven for a year and a half promise of change down the throats of the employees to the point where when they don't get it, they get that yeah, right attitude and it sticks. Right. It really hurts an organization. It does. Absolutely. And then you're talking about that mood piece of an import of a request. And now you have a mood that is not going to be a good conversation, no matter what you try to do. So it's then shifting that mood organizationally, which can be done with work. It, and it takes a lot of work. Elena, I want to thank you for joining us. We could probably talk uh, about this <laughs> <in nausea. laughs> absolutely i know we we definitely can well one of these days we'll do a longer one <laughs> or, or we'll just add on to this one we'll do a next we'll do a next series there you go I, I i really appreciate your time today i um found it insightful even for me and always learn something new every day right yeah absolutely yeah. and hopefully people can make better requests now <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I know firsthand that'll help in the union avoidance arena and just employee engagement. Uh, so, so great advice for uh, anybody that sees this video. With that said, I will see everybody next week on Employee Relations Words Wisdom. Elena, thanks again. We'll see you later. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>